Hello, everybody. Welcome in to the Outspoken Network, brought to you by the Sportscast. Got your hosts, Brian, Je- Jeff, and Craig on today. Guys, how you been? Doing good. Unmute that mic there. All right, awesome. Well, we got a special guest on today. His name is Paul. He runs the Bearski Film Show. Go check it out. Let's welcome in Paul. What's up, Paul? What's going on, everybody? Thanks for, thanks for joining the show. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me on. Like I said, uh, just excited to talk some football. Been talking a lot of Bears, but it's nice to just talk general NFL content, too. So, yeah, appreciate you guys. Of course. Good to have no you on. Problem. It's good, yeah, good to have you on. And, you know, even though you're a Bears fan, I won't, I won't hold it to you, hold it against you too much here. I, they... Sounds good, man. Hey, throw whatever you got at me. I could take it. Don't worry about it. So Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we're going to talk about our top five NFL power rankings headed into the season as the season starts next Thursday night. Um, we're going to do our top five, and we're going to get, jump into the headlines of the week right after that. So I don't know. I'm interested to see what kind of teams we have here in the top five. Maybe they're going to be different. Maybe they're the same five. Uh, let's do let's do one to five, I guess. Because we all, I mean, I don't know about y'all. Just like Patrick Mahomes, the number one quarterback in the NFL. I got the Chiefs number one. I don't really think you can have anybody else up there. They continue to dominate. Even last year, when they we thought they had an off year, they go and won the Super Bowl. So I think Chiefs have got to be number one. And if you're not having them at number one, then we might have something to talk about. But, Paul, let's, let's start with you, buddy. Who, who's your number one? Yeah, it's definitely the Kansas City Chiefs. And you know what? You guys said an off year, and it's interesting because it just depends on how you look at it. You know, they're – there's different phases of team building and they're at a point where, you know, they have to pay guys, but instead of paying somebody they drafted in the fifth round, Tyreek Hill, they ship them away to Miami for some first round picks and then sit there and get it done anyway. Like it's, it, it's such a textbook layout for how you should be running a team after, you know, you've had some success and whatnot because those situations change. So yeah, hats off to them. I don't think they're stopping anytime soon, mainly because Patrick Mahomes, and, uh, you know, just a couple interesting things. It's like, I believe his yards per average have gone down over the years. And it's not that he's gotten worse. It's he's starting to just take what the defense gives him and start trusting his guys to make plays and, you know, make it easy, make it cookie cutter, but efficient. And then also rushing yards, the second he hits the playoffs, his rushing yards are through the roof because now he's willing to rush scamp around, get that first down. Now it's worth the hit, not during the regular season, but during the playoffs. Man, they're just such a smart team all around. I don't see how you can't have Kansas City at number one. So That that makes total sense to me. I mean, I'd have to also agree. Last year, I kind of doubted a little bit because the offense was a little shaky it's at parts and aspects of the season. Um, you know, and I think their defense was really good. Um, that kind of bailed them out of a few, few times there. Um, but uh, whenever the lights are on and, and everything's ready to go and it's go time, especially in the playoffs, it's, you know, that's a da- it's still a dangerous team. It doesn't matter if they've lost Tyreek Hill or if they've, you know, have a couple other rookies that, I mean, I remember even during, during parts of the season where players were dropping the ball, you well, know, right. you'd have w- wide receivers open and, it, you know, they, the chemistry was off. I don't know, but that, that kind of, there were some question marks at me for me a little bit going into the playoffs, but, Obviously, those were laid to rest pretty quickly. So I don't. I think now that you give him a whole off season with these guys, I think you're going to see a completely different kind of uh, trust with his wide receivers this, this this time, especially with some of these young guys. So I think I think that Kansas City number one easily. Do you guys think that was the best defense he ever had in his career there last year? I think it's got to be close. If, I think it was. I just talked about it too, Jeff, a little bit, it's, and it seems like you know. We say an off year, they were 11 and six. The offense doesn't roll in as much, but the defense was. The defense kept them in those games. And it just seems like it's the, that way. If, if the offense is struggling, defense says, hey, I got you today. Very well coached. Then he reads this team is just a juggernaut. They're going to continue to be good. And they, they just like Paul said there, they, they're doing things the right way. They're not, I'm not going to overpay this wide receiver and Tyree Kill. We kind of all thought was crazy. You're letting this guy go. They just find the next guy. And you got to be, that's how you got to build your team. Uh, they went and drafted the Buffalo Bills, gave them another wide receiver and worthy from Texas. That's going to be something to watch out for. That connection this year alone in, in practice and everything is, is looking a little scary of his deep threat there with his speed. So him coming from Texas, really good wide receiver, and Buffalo gave it right to him. But, um, Craig, do you have them in number one too as well? Yeah. Uh, he just 
like Paul said, it, it's it's everybody said that when they gave Mahomes the contract and when they gave Kelsey and and you know they were go they go start paying guys they're not going to hang around when they start paying guys and they made the moves that they needed to make to stay competitive and and stay and and, and they did it with less and I mean. Two years ago, we sat here and said, this is the worst wide receiver, you know, core he's got. He was going to have the biggest fall off. And we all had to run the apology bus right through Kansas City because he just proved us wrong. And um, um, so, yeah, it, it, um, I mean, until, again, just like the number one quarterback ranking, until plus differently, they're going to be the number one team in football. Uh, you know, I mean, maybe – in a year or two, the division, maybe Denver, you know, as they get Knicks affiliated to the NFL and, and, you know, maybe they make a run, maybe Harbaugh gives them a little, you know, if he, if he can do the same thing he did in San Francisco, I don't think that's this year. Yeah. Yeah. They got that. Go ahead, Paul. You know, it's kind of crazy for any uh, one of you three guys. Do you know how long it took Andy Reid to win his first Super Bowl? A long time, which is crazy. I don't know how many years. How many years was it? Probably yeah, guesses. Guesses. Like 13 uh, years? More. Thir- over 13? 15? Really? More? Wow. What's the number? 21. 20? Wow. Yeah. You That's know, crazy. And, guys, it just speaks like we're, we're calling him a great coach, everything like that. He was fired at some point. You yeah. know, it's kind of it's kind of wild to think about when you actually think about it. But he is a damn good coach, right? However, it starts with the players. Like the fact that they got Patrick Mahomes out there is the reason why they're just dangerous, yeah. man. It, that kid is lights <clears throat> out. Um, and just, just one more quick little thing. Like uh, there's a story um, that Julian Edelman told and Julian Edelman was a seventh round pick on the Patriots. And he said, you know, he went to go work out with Brady the first time. And usually you would go work out with a guy and you'd get like 30 reps. Only, it was like 75, 80 reps. He's like almost triple what I'm used to. So I'm exhausted. He's like, but throughout the whole thing, he's like, when I throw this pass, this is where the ball's going to be. This is where you're going to catch it. And he's like coaching me up. And Julian Edelman said that Tom Brady probably taught him more than any wide receiver coach he had as yeah. a seventh round pick. Right. So when we're talking about the impact of a quarterback and I know it's silly coming from a bears fan, but trust me, I'm not learning from our quarterbacks, <laughs> right. I'm learning from guys like Tom Brady out there and things like that. But, um, Oh. Like the impact and the ability of a, a quarterback. I mean, there's tiers to this, and the guys at the very top. Yeah. Oh, that's it's such a huge gap between the guys in tier one and tier two. So yeah, I mean, that's where Patrick Mahomes is at. He's on he's on top of the hill right now. There's it's it's tough. Oh yeah, because everybody's <clears throat> opponent. <clears throat> well, uh, and it, I think uh, Sean Payton was something that he had mentioned that you know when he was with uh, New Orleans, he he wanted Patrick Mahomes, and they completely he got pushed back on it. And then he, you know Andy Reid swooped in and got him, and I was like, "That's that's pretty wild." It's it's crazy how he goes from college, and people draft him, and they're like, "Oh, this guy from Texas Tech," and then he blows up to be as good as he is. And... Well, do you guys know that Andy Reid wanted Paxton Lynch? That's yeah, horrible. so that story came out where that's he tried horrible. to trade up to the Broncos to get Paxton Lynch, and the Broncos denied him. Mm. Oh. And they said, "Oh, I guess we'll just take Chris along then." And then next year they trade up to get Mahomes. Look it's all right. That. The Bears, saved him from himself. So. The Bears okay. took Trubisky over Holmes and Watson. We're not and... talking about that, Brian. <laughs> We're not talking about that. Whew. That's tough. Sorry. I love, though, the first shot taken of the Bears is by, by, by yourself. So I, I appreciate that, Paul. I appreciate that. <laughs> it is what it is. It's our turn right. now, though. <laughs> it might be. You know, we'll get into that. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll have to get into that in a little bit. All right, number two, Craig. Who you got at number two, bud? Let's go. Uh, I can't. Again, I don't see anybody in their division giving them really any kind of problem. Uh, a, a fan of Baltimore, uh, you know, I mean, I they, they have a good team. Not a fan of their quarterback, so I kind of punish them on the the butte of I'm not a big Lamarcus or Lamar Jackson fan. Uh, um, that's really the only reason because defensively they're stout and they're going to probably be around too. So, but that's you know. I mean, if if with signing, I look back and having, you know, um, Lee, all their weapons, McCaffrey's been, when they got him, everybody said that was the missing piece, and he has been. They've been very unstoppable since they've got him, and that defense was very good. So yeah. that's what I got. 
Yeah, I also have them there at number two. I think they're the best team in the NFC. Uh, they got a stout defense. They've got one of the best coaches. Uh, he's probably the best coach in the NFC, in my opinion. He's he's really great at what he does. They bring back Ayuk, which we'll talk about here in headlines. That opens up their offense even more. That wasn't good news that he wasn't traded somewhere else. There's talk, already talks about them moving on from Debo Samuel, so you might see him traded this year because I don't think they have the money to pay all those guys. Interested to see if he goes somewhere, but the 49ers are just too good, and they're my kryptonite Packers. Never beat him. Aaron Rodgers never beat him in the playoffs. Jordan loves 0-1-1 against him in the in the playoffs, and they're just a good football team all around. They're gonna they they their defense will knock you in the mouth. So, I think Brock Purdy we did our quarterback listens uh, last week top ten. He's came in and done a fantastic job there as well. And um, I think if he does it again, I think people need a bit more some more respect on his name. But I got 49ers at number two. Paul, what about you, bud? You know, it's kind of funny. Like you sound. Kind of like us Bears fans there for a second, yeah, right. I can't stand just, the I, got, I, got, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know you guys had that just a that, <laughs> that kind of pain over there. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Uh, listen, I, I think it's very neck and neck for like the first uh, at least three, four teams, and um, and yeah. recency bias is recency bias. You know what I mean? Like until we see more football, we only know what we last saw. Yeah. And Craig, I'm with you. I wasn't a Lamar fan. I wasn't. In fact, I, I think at the beginning of last year, my co-host asked me, Lamar Jackson for Justin Fields. I was like, I, I don't know. Like, you'd have to really change your offense for Lamar for him to succeed. And I still think there's some type of upside to Fields. I still want to see it. And he was like, man, I'd give Fields in a first for Lamar. And then, well, come years end, he's MVP again, right? So, and I, he's got this thing where he's – missing a couple games a year. I think he's only played 75% of his career, but um, you know, I can't, I just can't keep doubting it. So it's like, I I don't, I don't really like Lamar. I don't like the fact that he's dropped some weight. I think they've got one of the best coaching staffs there. And I think they've adapted a very average offense to his play style and it's succeeded. Like he's still kind of doing it without weapons. And so until he doesn't, I think I have to take the Ravens at number two. It's a good pick. They got, I mean, they have a solid defense. It's all coaching. I'm with Craig. I don't like Lamar Jackson very much. Uh, he was MVP last year, but I'm just not a big believer. And I and when when playoff shows rolls around, he chokes most of the time. But he's yeah, also running into Patrick Mahomes over there. At, in the city, at but, one point, Peyton AFC. Manning. At one point, Peyton Manning had two MVPs and no no Super Bowls too. So you know it, it's an interesting spot for Lamar where he is in his career. But if he does go and win one and solidify, he will go down as you know a, a one of the best quarterbacks. Um, he just needs to actually go through and win one, right? And I just, I also feel that just the AFC is so much stronger than the NFC that I, I have my top two teams as both AFC teams for that. Yeah, reason. Jeff, who you got, bud? Number two. Uh, it is kind of a like like y'all were saying before. It's this. It's it's kind of gets interesting after one. But I'm gonna go ahead and go with the 49ers mainly because I I think that there's a lot of interesting elements to that team. They're pretty. They're pretty consistent um i mean they they're always a thorn in, in someone's side especially come playoff time agreed you know whether it's dallas whether it's you know green bay it's there's there's always something about this team that's fascinating that they seem to do something um different when it comes to playoff playoff atmosphere uh you know just getting something getting a lot out of players that you wouldn't normally think about you know as especially Brock Purdy that's one right there you know it's it's there's still this kind of is he a great quarterback or is it the system that he's in same with Lamar Jackson is he is a great quarterback or is it the system he's in uh, and so getting Ayuk back I think is, is super important um and you know Debo Samuel we'll see I mean he's still has that threat he still is a threat and you know it's something that teams definitely try to like target and you know either try to take him out of the game or something uh, but he is one of those threats where def- our defenses are going to be honing in on him and so it does leave other options open so i i just i base off of just the consistency i really really like the 49ers it's hard for me not to until we see more football being played by them this year i just i like the, i like what they're doing i was kind of rooting for them um so that's kind of who i'm going with i know brian i don't like him one bit um i respect <laughs> him though uh you know it's funny because they got mccaffrey and and 
When yeah. he first got McCaffrey, I said, oh, he's injury prone. He's not going to work out. Well, he's been healthy. Actually, I think Debo Samuel's been more injury prone yes. than, than McCaffrey has. So they have two, basically, McCaffreys. Debo Samuel's really good. So I'd take him on the, on the Packers team any, any day of the week. But And some, uh, of, that, some of that, to <clears throat> me, is also the way they're coached. Oh, definitely. Um, Shanahan's I- the best coach. I love yeah, the way seen. Shanahan coaches his team, how, you know, and the positions he puts his players in. So, yeah, I, I just, until somebody figures out the 49ers, it's hard for me to go against them. Yeah. No, he is a really, really great coach. Um, I like their, their GM too. Um, John Lynch, I think they're pretty aggressive. They, they go out and get people. They finally signed Ayuk back, but I got, you know, I, I talk about Lamar and I don't like him, but I got the Ravens number three. I think you can't really look too far past this team. They have a great defense. Um, they've always had a really good defense. And Lamar's good enough to get the job done. He was MVP last season. I don't know if he has an MVP level season again. I don't think he's he, he's going to be – his body's wear and tear for the back-to-back MVP seasons. He did take some weight off, so he might be a little bit slimmer. Interested to see what they do with Derrick Henry. He's a little past his prime, but we'll see how they can work that in. But the Ravens are, are just too good of a team not to have them in the top five, especially. But they're number three for me, even though I'm not a big Lamar fan like Craig. But, Craig, wh- who do you have at number three, bud? I can't go much lower with them. I, you know, I tried, um, but I just don't. Uh, it, the other two teams that I have in the list are, are going to be kind of Wild card and, and hard to hard to put them over Baltimore. Um, Fence carries that team. Lamar doesn't have to do as much as other quarterbacks to to games. You know, I mean, if he puts up twenty, that's normally probably pretty close to enough. Whereas other guys got to put up thirty five and forty sometimes. Uh, you just don't see the Ravens ever really let up a ton to anybody it doesn't really um then every game and when you're in every game like that and you have a guy that can kick the ball you know 65 hours you know 66 yards you know uh if you're in the game then then it shortens the field um so um i I have the ravens at number three all right jeff you got number three bud I'm, i'm going with i'm going with ravens i i'm not a big lamar fan um i just i like the the Ravens have always just been consistently a defensive minded team. Um, and they kind of continue that, 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 that narrative. So it's, it's fascinating to me that Lamar has had such, such success with this team, uh, the way that they're designed and defensive really first. And then you have this guy who was kind of a dual threat dude, uh, runs the ball well. And, and then there's times where he does throw well. And then there's, you know, there's times where I think he reverts back to just tucking it and going. So I think if, and that's the, the question is if, if Lamar was any on other, any other team, would he have this success? And I, I don't know, but, uh, I don't think he would, um, you know, so it's, it's hard to not, there's, it's hard for me to not put them in that anywhere below the three mark um, because of just the consistency they do typically are in the playoff mix a lot. They are a a threat uh, defensively, but Lamar is a weapon. You have to constantly be keeping an eye out when you play him, Um, you know, so there's nothing about um, the Ravens other than just a question mark as to if you, you know, if you start to figure out Lamar Jackson, do you take this team? Is this team done? Um, And so, yeah, I also the Derrick Henry thing, that's fascinating to me. How much does he have in the tank is the big question mark. Um, health, as you start aging, you know, as a running back, that's the first, it's one of the toughest positions to keep going at, at, at a, at an older age. So, and then I think you had mentioned that he had lost weight. That's kind of a concern to me, mainly because that, you you kind of run that risk of you know he's going to be lighter on his feet but he's also going to be prone to getting injured well uh, it's just not his running style he is the known exactly. for running through people not running around right. people exactly so if you lose the weight can you still do that you know i mean he he's yeah. never he's never avoided a tackle he's stiff armed people he's ran through them and and if you lose weight do you still have that kind of ability yeah, and I wonder your whole I, running style to try to now be the agile guy. 
Exactly. Yeah. And that maybe that's, that's a way to, that they think is maybe going to be a, a deterrent from being hurt or not. So, but I, I can't deny the, how good the Ravens have been. Um, and, you know, when it comes to one of the top teams, it's, I don't a fan of Lamar, but I, I can respect the team itself as a whole and respect how good they are. So they're at three. All right, Paul, you got number three, bud. Can't just give you my number three. I have to babble for a little bit, okay? Um, oh, that's so fine. I, I just have to want. say one more thing about the Ravens, but to say it, I'm going to start off with just a, a situation I had recently where somebody was talking to me about Justin Fields, and they were giving me the you know the excuse of, "Hey, well, we didn't put the right offense around him. We didn't put the right scheme around him. We didn't do him justice." And and I kind of like popped my lid a little bit, and I was just like, "There's only one fucking team in the NFL." that's willing to do that. And it's the Ravens like to put the right system around Justin, <laughs> you have to be, it takes a lot because 90% of this league runs up a uh, derivative of the Sean McVay offense pretty much. You know what I mean? So like most people are going to run a certain kind of offense and there's very few teams like the Ravens and Harbaugh's such a great coach. You know, I believe he passed on Lamar the first time and got him at the last pick of the draft. I believe they traded back and still got him. And so they were willing to do something over there, that's really, I mean, it's just like a lesson on coaching, in my yeah. opinion. And and so, you know, one of my favorite teams always to watch was the Patriots. And the one thing about the Patriots that you always heard is they just put the right guys in the right position. Just do your job. Just, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Anybody that went there had success because they were only asked to do a certain thing at a certain time. And they were good at that thing. You know what I mean? So they were put in positions to succeed. I feel like the Ravens do that now i feel like yeah. the, even with derrick henry and things like that like i feel like they're just going to find a way to put those players in position to do what they do best and, and i'm pretty confident of that just because of their coaching staff and what they're shown they're capable of doing but yeah they, all that they build their system around the players instead of having a system and then saying hey you you have to fit my system that's a lot of coaches do um and then they they draft some guys and the coach doesn't get to draft the team and they they get this ownership that drafts people for them, and they're like, I can't really use this guy. This is not kind of how my system runs. A good coach makes a system for the players he has to get the best out of them, and you're exactly right. The Ravens, I think, dumb down the offense for Lamar, make it more simple, and they, they have their own system to for Lamar to succeed there. Right, uh, and, and I mean – and. So that's where I, you know, I never had much faith in the Bears being able to do that for Justin Fields, who needed something similar. But I mean, you know, at six foot four, 220, 230 pounds running as fast as Tyreek Hill, like there's got to be a way to be able to utilize that in the right times. And early on, even with him, I said, like, this is great, but it's in the first quarter. Like, why don't we do this at the end of the game? <laughs> to win and things like that. And it just never, never happened. But my number three pick though, I'm just going to flip up with you guys. It's the 49ers. Yeah. Um, I figured that would be it. So. Yeah. And uh, I actually want to throw a curveball at you guys as if I haven't already, I, I have six teams listed top three AFC, top three NFC. So I don't know if you guys want to go down that route, but, uh, but I feel like the, the, the good conversation is really towards the back end of this thing. So yeah, yeah I actually have a number five and a number six. So if you guys no, want to do that, okay. but um, yeah, I think the 49ers, uh, they're in a position kind of like the Rams were, a year or two ago where they've gambled enough, you know, they gambled and, and lost and they gambled and won. And I mean, there's so few teams in this league are able to trade up for a third overall pick and then be able to get rid of that guy and still move forward. I would actually argue that that might be one of the reasons why they haven't won one um, because that has to hurt you. And you barely saw it with that team. It's still a playoff team every year. They're still competing, but um, time, time's about to be up. Like they've pushed their chips in a lot. I think they got another year before this thing starts really falling apart on them. So, yeah, I think 49ers have to – there's got to be a lot of motivation there for them to succeed this year. Yeah, it's with that team, it's it's Super Bowl or bust. Getting there, getting there is not just going to cut it. It's, it's, we, need to, we need to see something. we got to see a Super Bowl ring in our hand next year. You know, it's a cool Pretty story, much. guys. I don't know if you know this or not. Um, Kyle Shanahan, he used to babysit Christian McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah his dad was the coach and Christian's dad was a player. And yeah. So, you know, that, that trade was a little more than just an NFL trade. It was personal a little bit too. I think that's part of the reason why they were willing to give up what they gave up for him. But uh, a little yeah, side, it's, side it's, note. It's, it's, it's got to come through. Yeah. What's up with uh, McCaffrey? They, it's funny. I was at the grocery store like a, a couple years ago when I first moved here 
and I'm at I'm just down the aisle looking at barbecue sauces, and here's Ed McCaffrey's barbecue sauce. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then like, and then I found out we were in Castle Rock, and they were like, yeah, they used to live in Castle Rock. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was like, that's cool. I'm like, that's pretty wild. That's cool. So yeah, uh, Kyle Shanahan's dad um, has a record at a high school, maybe a mile or two away from me. He used to live here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, our number four. Greg, kick us off. Who's your number four team? I think it gets interesting. More this is where this these. is where it comes off the rail, boys. What, we um, have the, do you have the Green Bay Packers there? Like, you know, no, what? I do not. <laughs> I do not. Probably going to catch just as much heat for who I do have there as as I would if the Packers were there. Um, Houston Texans. Um, I absolutely crucified this kid when he came out or to what I've done to. Paul drafted for different reasons. I didn't think he had the skill level to come to the NFL, whereas I believe Caleb Williams has the skill level. I just don't believe Caleb Williams has the work ethic. Um, he's going to have to show a little bit more on that aspect. But I blasted C.J. Stroud and said, you're just like every other Ohio State quarterback that ever has come out into the NFL. You will do nothing the Houston Texans will continue to spiral for years to come and walked in the door and said here, and we're going to do things my way and became the leader of that team. The day he walked in the door, first one in, he was the last one out. He, he got with wide receivers. You saw him go and take these wide receivers down to high school football fields and backyards and, and go and work with them. And that's why they instantly have chemistry They've made some moves to upgrade that offense. They made some moves to upgrade that offensive line. Uh, the defense, obviously, with the picks they had in the past, does he have the sophomore slump that you hear? And and now people have some tape on him. Do they figure him out? We'll see. But right now, um, he he did everything that that to prove me wrong. And and normally I'm not too far off on the quarterbacks, um, but I was off on that one. And and so. Stroud gets the vote. I don't think you're going to catch any flack for that. I think Texans are a really good football team. I could easily I see them being in the top year. five. Uh, and, and, yeah. And that's yeah. where I thought I would catch the, the flack was I, it's a little early. Well, that's like like last week we were talking about quarterbacks, and Ryan's like, Stroud's got to be in the top ten. I said, he, he, I need to see it one more year. I just why I didn't put love in there. You got I got to see it one more year. You can't just go off one year. I, I have I have the Lions at number four. The Lions are number one, my number four team. They got a good defense. I really like their head coach. As weird as that's to say that I like another coach in my division. Um, Goff had a great year last year. I think a lot of people don't really give him the respect he needed last year. He deserves some respect. They got a good running game. They got great offensive weapons. They're going to be at the top of that division this year, fighting f- between the Packers to win it. Um a lot of people already said it's the Lions division to win. I think I think Packers will come pretty close to winning it, if not. But Lions are a good football team. I, I hate to say it, but uh, they're just too good. A mod, a, a, a St. Brown's a great wide receiver. I mean, one a top five wide receiver, a good running game, good head coach. I hope he has a bad year this year, but he had a really good year last year. And uh, I'm glad they were able to get uh, able to beat the Rams in the playoffs last year. They should have beat the 49ers and went to the Super Bowl, but that is that is it. But I might get flack for the Lions being that high, but I just thought they were really solid last year, and I think they're going to be a 10, 11, 12 win team this year as well. So uh, and the, the roster just says this says they're going to be good if, if you're going by what they did last year and and the roster that they got. But Paul, do you, Paul, do you like uh you like their head coach? I like their offensive coordinator. Yeah. I look at it as more of like that Atlanta situation where uh, Kyle Shanahan was there calling the plays. They made the Super Bowl. They lost against the Patriots, but they had that 28-3 to lead. And then, look, Kyle Shanahan goes to San Francisco. Success, success, success. Meanwhile, Atlanta yeah. just kind of dwindles away to nothing. So, like, who, you know. Who is their offensive coordinator? What's his name? Who's? The Lions. A ben Johnson. So That's he right. was offered some uh, head coaching positions. Yeah, he turned him year, down. And he turned him down. And he came back. And for me, that, that was going to be the biggest factor on whether they keep having success or not. And yeah. um, listen, I like the head coach, but that, that rah-rah style, that rah-rah mentality, it works when you're winning. Second you start losing. Man, we had like 
club dub going on over here after you know what i mean after you lose three in a row and win one yeah. woo club dub. no that shit doesn't work man you, you can't hype these guys up when you have a, a losing record so it, it's nice when it's all going well but the second it doesn't um i you know and the other thing about them is like there's there's aggressiveness and there's stubbornness and like there yeah. was that one game where they went for it on fourth down like over and over and over like kick the field goal lose. just it's take just three like, points just, just god damn it like you serious <laughs> you know what i mean and so those are the things that kind of draw me back a little bit um from that coaching staff but um, if you're asking me if i have them at four i don't i told you i have a, a top three nfc and a top three afc but i gotta I still got to look at the roster up and down. I mean, I don't know. I went so back and forth on this one. I really did. I, you know what? Actually, fine. I'll give it to the Lions. Because Good of their one. coaching staff still being <laughs> consistent, because their window is still open, you know, it's just – it boggles my mind because the Rams literally got rid of golf so they could win. <laughs> but yeah. I guess maybe, maybe, I mean, I don't know. Kirk Cousins 2.0 in my opinion, but. Uh, I'm not a bit a big fan of Goff, but he had a great year last year. He did I have mean, a great year. I'm not my my take question away. is, was it he found something or was it let's muster up to back up the Brinks truck? Your well, that people can be, people that. Send, I mean, send, I, seem to play out for contract. I was at a Monday night game um, at Soldier Field in December, Bears Rams. We won that game like 15 to nine. I mean, he could just not move the ball in the cold at all. And it, I just remember seeing him like, ah, whatever. Like, I don't know. And, and same thing with like Kirk Cousins. It's like when it gets, you know, to the most critical moment, you're in the playoffs, fourth and eight. What do you do? You throw a three yard up and out to the tight end and hope he makes a play. Meanwhile, yeah. you have Justin Jefferson. Like, just give him a fucking 50 50 pop a ball at that point. But you're not going to because you're Kirk Cousins. Like, I kind of feel the same thing about golf. Like, okay. Sure, he's had a good regular season in the clutch, in the most critical moment. Can he do it? The Rams didn't think so, and they went to a Super Bowl with him. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's my big reservation on them. But, yeah, I, I'll give them at number four. All right, Jeff, go ahead, bud. What's, who's your number four team? Oddly enough, it is going to be the Bears. Um, I did like, Wait, you what? know. The Bears? Not the Bears. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm reading. I'm seeing the Bears oh, behind him, and then I'm you're saying. Killing me. You're killing me. Uh, <laughs> Got me excited. I was like, "This is just like that Jordan Love prediction last no. week." No, no, oh. the, <laughs> the Lions, the Lions. Yes, the Lions. I, I was like, like, "Wait a minute!" <laughs> Brian almost had a heart attack. They're gonna do oh. it. Even I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> this <laughs> now, guy's like, no "Paul's way. like, now this guy's just trolling me." <laughs> uh, I wasn't. Uh, no, it's the Lions. I, you know, I, I liked what they. Did it? I was kind of rooting for him. I there was one of those kind of uh, you know Cinderella story kind of deals last year where it was you know this team hasn't done nothing for so long and um, it was kind of exciting to see that go. The the I guess the question mark is can they repeat this and the fact that they have kept the same staff and in, intact that it's important um, that kind of got them to that point I think is super critical. I will agree with that. You know. Uh, analysis for sure. So not the biggest golf fan too much, but I do like their defense. I love their, their coach and the way he, you know, puts, puts everything in place for them. And so I, I like the the defense was really good. Um, So overall, I don't see, it was tough for that one. That is one of those flips uh, that could have gone either way. And, and, but I, I hope that now that they did, they kind of kept everything in place. I hope that that continues and I'm hopeful to see that. So I'm going to, that's one of the reasons why I have him at four. I do think that it was, it was fun to watch, you know, in the playoffs. So I kind of want to con- continue seeing that. So yeah, I got them at four. This is an NFC North question for Paul here. Who do you got one in the division this year? And don't say the bears, the lions, lions. Yeah. Listen, I have us at nine and eight, but, the stubbornness in me has me sweeping you guys. Uh, the, the more realistic on. thing is probably we go one and one with you and one and one with the Lions. Split. But I'll, I'll take I'll take zero and two to the Lions if I could get two and zero. Two and Hey, look, yeah, that's important to us. That I really felt is. so we bad. We need to see the change. I felt so talking. bad for my buddy Brandon. He picks me up. It's the first game Bears versus Packers last season, and he talks all this crap on the way to the, on the way to the bar. He's like, "This is our year, man." 
We're about to dominate you. We're, this is our year. I'm telling you. And I'm sitting there at the, eating my chicken wings, and we're up thirty something. This I'm like, I'm just laughing. It's just, no, it was just funny. You, you want a bad story? Uh, I'll, give a bad story. I'll give you a bad story. Give me a bad story. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So um, Let's hear it. one of the four cold. I think it was like the fourth coldest game, uh, late December. Uh, towards the end of the year, and me and my two brothers-in-law, um, my wife's brothers, one of them has two kids, and he lives in uh, he lives up in uh, what you call it in Wisconsin at um, Lake Geneva, right? So the one kid, the older one's already turned to a Packer fan. The younger one's still nice. salvageable, right? So um, I think he liked like Cincinnati or some bullshit at the time because he played Madden or whatever. Um, but Sal- we take him to the game. And, yeah, I know you like that. That's a good term. <laughs> so uh, he's not. He's going to be broken for life if he listens to us. But uh, so we're sitting there, and it's the fourth quarter, and we tie this game up, and we're freezing our asses off. And the kids are like, "We want to go home." We're up in the nosebleed sections. We don't care, and we're just telling them, "Like, listen, this is what being the man's about. Like, we're going to sit here through another." however, you know, many minutes of this freezing ass weather and endure it. Cause we just tied this game. We're going in a damn overtime and we're going to win this thing and we're going to take it home. And we're, you know what I mean? And we're giving them these rah, rah speeches. And all of a sudden uh, there's like 30 seconds left in the game. Aaron Rodgers drops back. It was like 60 <laughs> yards to Jordy Nelson. I'm just like, he won't even Drops let it me in the bucket. My <laughs> ass off. He won't even let me freeze my ass off. Greatness. Greatness. No, dude, it scarred me like that. that Rand- was... Randall Cobb is the bear killer. I'm sure Greatness. those kids like. We're just Ryan's like, oh. back. <laughs> we're not being fans of this team, right? It's Ryan it's says, rough, man. It's rough. Ryan's some back. rough moments. Ryan says the love top three up. is madness. Yeah, I made my <laughs> wife stay up and watch games. Like, no, we're look, we're gonna beat him. We're gonna beat him. At the end, it was like Thanksgiving or something. I'm like, I'm sorry, just go to bed. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's been uh, bad. It's been bad for us. It's been bad. I mean, Brian's Brian's been on. The, he's gone to a Cowboy game and watched Aaron Rodgers oh. just like last second touchdown. I was, I was, just... I was at the game when Aaron Rodgers was hurt and Matt Flynn came back from twenty six points at halftime to win the game. <laughs> That's greatest. All, all the it. Cowboy, all the Cowboys crying out. There. And it's funny because I don't know who I hate more: the Bears or Cowboys. Like your, <laughs> Bears are my rival, and I grew up with so much cocky Cowboy fans living in Texas. Sorry, Craig. Uh, Craig's that... not a cocky Cowboy fan. Come no. On. Craig's not one of those. No, Craig's pretty realistic, for the most part. But anyways, all right, let's get to our top number, f- our la- our five. Craig, I got Texans right here. I I, I fought on pitting them in, and I said, look, I got to do it. I-, I I think they're gonna grow this year. Um, CJ Stroud, I was just like you. Every Ohio State quarterback comes out, and then they flop, and he proved us wrong. Um, this defensive coaching staff is great. This defense is great. This team is 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 just too good. Uh, I think they run away with their division this year, yeah. as their division is not very good. And my only concern is their big pickup in the offseason, Diggs, great wide receiver, but he's selfish. Diva. He can be. He can be. Yes, he can be a cancer. So I really want to see how that relationship grows. Think love or not love. Sorry, I don't Stroud, think Stroud is, feeds into that. I think, don't think, I think so. Stroud, I think Stroud will put him in his place and say you'll get you'll get when you're open. Yeah, I think so too. I think it'll be the he'll be the leader. I think he already obviously already is a leader, but I think he'll he'll shut that down and and go from there. But I got the Texas at number five, and, and I don't think you can have them too much further out of there. I mean, they're definitely a top eight to me in my opinion. But I got him at five, and and Stroud's fun to watch. He's one of those quarterbacks I'll turn on to watch. Let's go with Jeff. Jeff, who's your five? So I'm going to kind of stick with that, but I think for different reasons. Um, I like Houston, but I like – and Stroud's awesome, and the offense is great, but I do like the way they play their defense. Their defense is really good. I like the coach that they have that was one of the coaches. I was one of the finalists that was rumored to come to Denver. He decided not to and ended up uh, in Houston. I mean, and, and awesome for him. I mean, he ended up in a really good spot, and he's developed – uh, he's actually, I think he actually took some of our defensive players, um, uh, with him. And, and, and so, and he, he had an amazing, you know, defense when he was with, uh, the 49ers. So it's like, you know, he, he's developed a really good team there with obviously the offense as good as it is with Stroud and the excitement there. 
but I really like the way this team plays defense. So, you know, I, I'm a big defensive guy. I, I just like watching good defenses. So I'm just going to stick with them. And, you know, the cherry on top is Stroud. Or the cherry on top is this offense and the excitement with that and the and the excitement to see it mold into something uh, better than it was last year, which is pretty wild to think. So uh, you're getting a CJ Stroud that is going to be more mature now, uh, one year in, you know, one more year in and one, you know, which is actually fascinating to to see how he evolves and becomes a better player. So um, that's where I, I got Houston in that spot, but for a little bit different reasons. Ryan Simmons has the Cowboys a top five team. Oh. Ryan, let's stop being a homer, buddy. They are not a top five football team. They're just not. They're not. All right? They're not. Top ten, yes. Top five, I don't I can't see it. And he also says it's funny because he says he was at a he was at a Cowboys Packers playoff game and uh was I know, we this... all know I think it was this last was it this last year, <laughs> was Ryan? It this last year? I think it I was I feel bad. He also Can says I give you my problem with the Cowboys. Oh please, let's hear it. Well, Delvin yeah, so, 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 And like that's it season. for tonight, fellas. <laughs> Craig's Sorry, like Craig. oh, hey, see you later, buddy. Sorry, Craig, but it's like the whole season, it was the games went one of two ways. You're either blowing teams out or you're getting blown out. And you, you became very one dimensional. And that's why the Lions scared me because the Lions found different <clears throat> ways to win games. I mean, we had four turnovers against them and they still came back and won. Um, so, like, well, being you're able the Bears. To win, I know, but, but, but we're not talking about my team. We're talking about the Lions finding different ways to win against different opponents. You're right. right. No matter who those opponents were, they still, that kind of is a dangerous thing to me. So, the second it got like the Cowboys were 10 points down, I was like, oh, dead in the water. I've seen this before all year. And well, that's so, a McCarthy, and that's, that's a McCarthy staple is, is, he wins the games he kind of not supposed to, but then he never wins the games that he's supposed to know which team he's going to have show up. You know? I don't know why the reason is, but that's the one thing that I noticed that had me saying, hey, if this team just gets down two scores, they're not coming back. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mike Zimmer will be the head coach next year, and McCarthy will be fired. Mm-mm. Already guarantee you. McCarthy will be so, fired, but Belichick will be the head coach. It's already in that deal is already done. I can tell you. You right know what now. the rumor is? No, the rumor is McCarthy fired Dion in Dallas with his son oh. as the as the quarterback because Dak won't be there next year. I'm like, all right, guys, you'll never like, be. We're really home. there's some pie in the sky there. I don't Let's, really. Jerry would take it because it would get you all might, talking. But, I might, you know, I might jump right off the wagon if Shadir Sanders is my quarterback. I'm gonna. No, that no. All right. Ryan, we need to have an argument here because can I say one not thing? Really an about, argument. Can I say one thing that Ryan put on here that is like, I don't know why you did that to yourself. What? Most wins since two thousand nine, two thousand nineteen. Not name the Chiefs. Great, come if you on. Want to be good is at that regular an example season, buddy? or that you like, want to Playoff? be compared to? <laughs> yeah, does it matter? This is yeah. Well, here's the problem, Ryan, and you, you need to jump on the show and talk about this at some point. I agree, Zimmerman's a good defensive coordinator. Y'all had a top five defense last year. How much better are they going to get? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and Dak, I didn't know that until like two episodes ago when Craig pointed it out. And I was like, wait, Dak, Dak had a top five defense last year and they couldn't go anywhere in the playoffs? That is saying something. What my one question about that is, when did Romo have a top five defense? Or did he Maybe ever? the year that they were the one seed and lost to the Giants. I'd have to look it up, though. You know, but okay, how about this? In 2010, the Chargers had a number one overall defense and a number one overall offense. And I think they went <laughs> nine and seven. Yeah. Because they had the Terrible. 32nd special teams in the league. And it's it's a team game, right? So, like, yeah. listen, financial allocation is huge. Dak's taking up way too much money. He's taking up way too much money. It, it's got to be on him. And like I, I told you guys earlier, it took Andy Reid 21 damn years to win a Super Bowl. It wasn't until he got Patrick Mahomes. So, at some point, like, I'm not saying that the coaches are great over there. They're not. But if they're winning regular season games, then they know how to win. At some point, it does kind of fall on the players. And especially if you look at how the fin- finances are allocated, yeah, Dak's taken up a lot of that. So, you know, it's funny. I did this uh, quarterback cap percentage analysis where I went back the last 10 years, took the top 10 paid guys, and just found a percentage of how much of the cap are they taking up. And you go back 10 years ago in 2014, th- listen, the percentage stayed kind of the same until this last year. This last year was whack. But in 2014, the top eight guys either won a Super Bowl, 
have been in a Super Bowl or like are making a Super Bowl run. Whereas this last year, the top four out of five guys have no business being there. And the only one that was there was Matthew Stafford. But but like Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Daniel Jones. I forget who the fourth one was, but it's yeah, the like, Giants but are dumbasses for Daniel no Jones. Business oh. getting paid that much money because they haven't backed it up with playoff success. And so, like, listen, Brian, I'm, I'm gonna toss this trivia your way. When Aaron Rodgers won the Super Bowl, who was his head coach? It was McCarthy. Okay, who was his offensive coordinator? I do not remember. Her. Joe Philbin. Remember that guy? Yes, that right. Yes. For two yes. years and like dwindled away to nothing because he sucked. Yeah. And then like um, that's why I he forgot was also the this. most sacked quarterback that year. So listen, a great quarterback has shown that he can win you one despite oh, obstacles Aaron. in front of him. Aaron, but but yes. if you want continued yes. success, you need a good coaching staff and good talent and a good quarterback. We, we won that money. Super Bowl despite well, all on McCarthy. Aaron Rodgers' shoulder. Yeah, for yes. sure, you did. And so, like, I don't see Dak Prescott doing it despite Mike McCarthy. Now, I just Look, don't like. He's no, just, and ever since Dak's been in the, in he's the league, good, but he's not that good. He's. He's needed. We they called him Silver Spoon Prescott because he had a lot of weapons. He needed a lot of help. I, and I'm gonna sound. You probably think I'm a Dak Hayton. Dak's a top. Five, I have him a top five quarterback, but he's not the guy to take you to the Super Bowl. It's just not gonna happen. But and then this, I don't know how we got on Cowboy Talk. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> but this off season, this next off season, will come down to we're gonna be talking about Dak a lot because it'll be what team is he playing for next year? And Dallas gonna pay him. Someone else is going to pay him. Someone else would pay him. But we can save that for another week. Did we get everyone's top five? Nope. No. No. Okay. Am I the last one or Craig? You can go. I can go. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> you go because I have a top five and six. So I'm going to look. I got, a, I, you guys? I got the Lions. I mean, I was I was very close to mm-hmm. to those two teams together. Uh, I could flip-flop them at any point in time. Uh, and being, you know, kind of new last year, the, the – Texans being new last year, both teams are going to have to come out this year and prove it again to be able that that wasn't a fluke, that that wasn't lightning in a bottle. Um, I don't think it was for either team, but um interested to see if Goff, you know, can – It was it for the money, was it for the paycheck, or was it he found something with that offensive coordinator in Ben Johnson that, that clicked and and is is, you know – Absolute beast. Picking himself up to be a top wide receiver. Uh, and Williams, if he could stay off the gambling and, and stay off suspension, um, you know, is a stud. Uh, core, they had some really good running backs. Their offensive line for the first time all in, in years was actually played together for more than like three games. Uh, I just wonder if if they face a little adversity, they handle that. That Nago might be a little better. Now the Green Bay, because they thought, they thought, really honestly, they thought, we're good. Everybody else is trash. We got this division on lockdown. And all of a sudden, here comes Jordan Love the last eight games of the season. And now Caleb Williams comes in in preseason. And was he playing against guys that weren't going to make the roster when he looked good? Maybe. We'll find out. But if he looks anywhere like he did in preseason – uh, it's going to get real interesting for the next few years, and and Detroit's not going to have the run that they thought they they were going to yeah. have for they they thought they were going to be ahead of the pack for a couple of years, and and it it might be a dogfight. Totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. So I'm going to give you guys right, my my number five and my number six, um, both the third teams in the NFC and the AFC, right? So I just I can't leave out the Eagles. I don't think they'd be my number five though. I think they'd be my number six. Yeah, but, but I just see a, a very complete roster, yeah. a team that's that's very well built and, and very all around. I'm not the biggest Jalen Hurts fan, but they're not asking him to do everything. And so, like, I, I just, I don't know. I think the Eagles are still somebody to reckon with. And they're my number six team. Yeah, I they, we six. can't just. My question is, them off. Hurts lost the locker room last year, I believe. And Possibly. And I interested to see if they play with him. Or play against him, you know, because I think they were what eight no nine or no, and then all of a sudden just imploded. Yes, they and, did. and they were and, talking you know, about Hertz getting knocked out in the tunnel by the you know his own guys, and and you know I don't know if any of that's true, but but you know we as Bears fans we went from Vic Fangio to Sean Desai, they went from Sean Desai now to Vic Fangio, 
I think they got the better idea there because Vic Fangio yeah. is a legit defensive coach. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. so I think they've made that turnaround in those areas. And, and yeah, I just, I have to give them uh, my number five spot, but my number six, I mean, my, I'm sorry. I have to give them my number six spot as an honorable mention, but my number five spot, is the Jets. I think if Aaron Rodgers mm. has anything left in the tank, I think that's a very, very complete roster. To see them third in 100%. the AFC would not surprise me, and I feel like they're also another team that's do or die all in. So He's this yes. year or not, so yeah. I, I got they him. win that division this year, in my opinion. Uh, me too. I'm really so high I got them as my number Jets. five team. So yeah, ahead of the Texans, I'll take Aaron Rodgers and the damn Jets. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers does have some left in the tank if he can Ripple keep his Achilles key. from ripping in half. Ryan's, <laughs> Ryan's <laughs> hating over say here. It. I hate it. I hate Ryan's hate. hating over here with the Eagles. Yeah, yes, the Eagles I, have I, a great I, roster. You cannot say uh, that they don't, uh, but the, that ownership. Uh, okay. Or this one. I, know, I don't I'm think sorry. it's I don't think it's hot take if the Packers fall off. There's a lot of people underestimating the Packers this year. You talk about sophomore slump with Jordan Love, uh, CJ Stroud. I think you could this new think, defensive coordinator. Yes, they're, they're you could see it. Losing points. Yes, I think the I division think beats take, up but... on itself. But if it does, you only sign them for three years guaranteed, so that's yeah. not too. Oh big yeah, you have you outs. Gotta, you still, yeah, you still have outs and you still have options moving <clears> forward. And you know, they were one of the youngest teams last year to make the playoffs. The young, yeah. One of the youngest teams. We, period. We, I think maybe we are the youngest, youngest team in the yeah, NFL. So, and then it's hard to sit there and point at, like, where'd you take a step back necessarily? Well, that's what I'm saying. So, I'm going, so it's rough. We're so only, I, I hear you. We're only going to gain more experience, more time together. I think Matt LaFleur is very underrated head coach in the NFC. Um, I'm interested to see what our defensive coordinator uh, from Boston College comes in and does his defense. It can't be any worse than uh, the last guy. I forget his name, but he was terrible. Oh, believe me, it can. Terrible. Well, he probably can. can but. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for having me on, though. I do have to get going. So you have to get going. Appreciate yeah, it's it. Yeah, it, it's a long show tonight. Out. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Sorry about all the chatter, but. Awesome. Man, nice to have you on. That's what we're here for. All right. Have a, have a good Thank one. Thank you, guys. Paul.